Hello and welcome to Blocks Master. My name is Elder and this is the new master class covering horizontal scrolling in Blocks 5. So I will open the empty new project and show you what you can do with this horizontal scrolling. So the first part will be focusing on the basics. So to add a new horizontal scrolling section, just add a div container. And when you select it here in the sidebar, right sidebar, you have an option to set the type for this div container. And there is an option horizontal scroll. If you select it, right away you will see the new panel, these settings for horizontal scrolling. And this allows it to change some things like size, buttons, icons, scroll correction, and always show controls. So let me show you what each of these things do. So right now this div container is empty. Let's add something inside. It can be cards, it can be images, it can be whatever you want. Uh, I think the simplest one will be image. So the simplest thing to show here. So there is just one of them, obviously. We can duplicate this image, command D, to have like how many, six images now. And because our div is set to horizontal scroll, you can see if I use my mouse here, even inside the blocks canvas, I can scroll right to left, left to right. And if we go to preview, you can see that we even have these icons here, which will allow us to scroll left or right. But I think that although this is possible, possible way to use this, I think the best thing will be to set the size for this image to something smaller. So there are a few options, of course, but basically add a class. So let's say this is the slider item. You can call this whatever you want. You don't need to put some specific class name. And all you need to do is set the maximum width for this element. Or you can set the width or maximum width. It's up to you. So for maximum width, you can set the exact number. So let's say 400. And if we delete the ones we had there and duplicate the one this class now we have five images all of them are 400 pixels wide and if we do that you can see that the third image is not actually perfectly cut so instead of that you can set these two percentages so i think something like well 25 33 or 50 might be a good option so if you set it to 50 you can see we have two uh two images here but the thing is the second one is a little bit cut and it is cut because we have this empty area or it is called gap between the two images if you even use these icons here you can see that it will not scroll all the way to the third image here or second image it will always cut it here and it is trying to scroll for the amount of width of one item, but as you can see that because of this gap, we have some problem here. Of course, I will show you how to fix this a little bit later. But first, let me explain what else we have here. So let's select our div. And well, by default, we have the size set to default. This is the size we have by default. But if we want, we can switch it to compact. And what it will do, it will just make this icon smaller. I'm not a big fan of compact, by the way. In addition to that, we can set the size and uh, not the size, the color and uh, for buttons and icons inside the button. So let's say that this is what I want. You will see that now it will have these icons here. And that's cool. Scroll correction is when you swipe on your trackpad or mouse to the right this horizontal carousel will kind of snap to place but obviously right now it's not working properly because of this gap we have here between images but basically this this scroll correction makes it a little bit better user experience for these images it does have some kind of drawbacks because sometimes it feels a little bit jumpy. 
It was improved actually in the latest versions, but you can see still sometimes it is not perfect in my opinion. So for my websites, I usually disable it, but it can be useful. So if you want, you can leave it enabled and always show controls. Well, obviously controls are these icons on left and right. You can see right now they're shown only on hover. And right now we have the first image here. So it's, it is kind of hiding it on the left. But if we scroll a little bit to the side, by the way, you can see scroll correction is not working anymore. It will show us both. If you go to the end of this carousel, you can see that only show it only shows us one. So if we set always show controls, it will always show them like that. And again, if the if if we can swipe to left and right or scroll to left and right, it will show you two. Or if we go to the end of this carousel, you can see that one will be hidden. For some reason, it shows the left one at first and then it kind of hides a few seconds later. So again, for me, I think it's better to, sh to hide them because if users hover the mouse, it will show them anyway. And again, you saw that even now, it shows the left one for one second for some reason, even though you cannot scroll to the left when you start. It, there is no problem like this on the right. And by the way, you can see that it is completely hidden. But anyway, this is uh, quite flexible and I actually like what it does here. If we go to the class manager, you will see that blocks automatically created two classes for us, H scroll button and H scroll icon. And these are basically for the button caller and icon caller. So you can use these to maybe set some gradient instead of the of the just simple color if you want, like this for the buttons. And if we go back here, you can see that now our buttons are gradient. You can also use this to do some for example, adjustments to the to the radius of this button. If you want to have the square buttons, you can also do that here. You can see now we have them square. If you want, you can change the size by brick point for each brick point. So let's say that on LG, we want it to be 100 by 100. By editing this button class, you will see that now we have 100 by 100. And of course, right now icon is not centered. To, to fix that, we will open this class and enable flex and make sure that the alignment and justifying is to the center. So this way you can see that now we have this. I mean, I, I can't say they are looking better, but you can see the idea that you can use this class to, to pretty much do whatever you want with the icons there. It is not perfect, actually it's not super advanced. There are some things which are not possible using just this icon, uh, not icon, this button class and icon class we have here. And what we can do to even further kind of customize this area, including the moving of these buttons to the bottom or to the center or something like that. Well, I will show you that in the second part of this video. So to wrap up the first part, I think I want to show you here how to get rid of this gap or this space between the images. And for that, I will actually go to Inspector in Safari. We can go inside the Blocks Preview window. And I will show you how I always find the classes. So by selecting this div container, it shows me the first class here. I can see blocks horizontal scroll area. And this class has the gap set to 20 pixels. And this is exactly the amount of space we have between two images. So to change that, we can copy this class, go to blocks. Unfortunately, we do not have the gap inside the class editor anywhere. So we don't have it here, unfortunately. So how we can set it? Well, we just need to go to code editor and add the additional CSS. So let's put this class, we just copy it and we will type gap, whoops, gap 
zero pixels like that and by doing that you will see that now even though in the canvas on the canvas it is not visible like this if you go to preview you can see that there is no gap anymore or browser preview you can see that now we don't have this gap anymore alternative way to add this gap and the one i suggest is actually taking our slider item or whatever the class you added to the item itself be it the card image whatever and we can add some padding on right and left and this way we will have a margin 10 for example in this case and as you can see now when we use these controls you can see that it actually slides the proper amount because padding is kind of included in the 50% for each of the image width and as you can see now it works perfectly without cutting the like element like this you can see I can still do that because I don't have the scroll correction enabled but actually right now we can enable scroll correction and it will work better because now it will perfectly slide to the start of each of the images as you can see it works perfectly so this is pretty much the basics and everything you need to know to use this feature let me go to the second part of the video and do a little bit more editing to make it even more customizable.